Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Proverbs chapter 31. We're going to learn some surprising things today about God's woman. What it means to be a perfect lady. The rare wife. What I'm going to talk about is rare breeds. The perfect lady. The kind of people that are hard to find. And I trust you're one of them. Ladies. Men. Some of you are going to nod your head and say, mm hmm. <laughs> Others are going to say, good Lord. <laughs> but all of us are going to grow, all right? Amen. We're going to learn. Proverbs chapter 31. One thing I like about the Bible is the Bible does not pull punches. And the Bible does not apologize, does not apologize for being what it is, the truth. And so, I want you to right now chip away all your old traditional learnings. I want you to root up all of the old wives' tales and burn them. I want you to collect all of your historical, unprofitable, denominational garbage. And I want you to stuff it in a bag and put it right next to the chair where you're sitting. Because we're going to throw it all away in a minute. And I want you to just lay yourself bare to this word. I want everybody to get a Bible. If you don't have one, sit by someone who has one. I want you to get a pen and some note paper. And I want you to go through with me what God says is His woman. A godly woman. If you are not married, you are in, a, in the right place at the right time. You are going to see what you are supposed to be. And those of you who are married, I hope you are not in shock when I'm through. But I want you to look at the word. I am going to walk on some toes. Don't put your shoes on. Leave them off. I'm going to rebuke some people with the word. The Bible says the word of God is good for rebuke. I'm going to correct some of the misconceptions that have been floating around God's church. We are going to dispel a lot of bad teaching and replace it with the Word of God. The 31st chapter of Proverbs, beginning with verse 10, introduces us to the rare lady. It says a capable, as the word virtuous means, a virtuous woman is hard to find. He who can find her is blessed. She is far more precious than rubies or pearls, jewels. The virtuous woman is like rubies. The word virtuous, write this down, means intelligent, capable, and good-hearted. Intelligent, capable, and good-hearted. Now first you gotta, gotta ask yourself, am I intelligent? God don't have no stupid fool. Intelligent women, man. I mean, the Proverbs start off laying the groundwork. We're talking about intelligent women now. Intelligent women don't row in the street. Hello. Now, somebody who have a lack of intelligence do that. 
intelligent people don't wear their feelings on their sleeves. They're not easily hurt. Intelligent people do not carry news. You leave that for foolish people. Intelligent people don't dress silly. You're looking at me over there in the old floor. Check your clothes. I mean, intelligent people carry themselves in an intelligent way. And the Bible says they're not common. Hey. In the virtuous woman, the word virtuous also means capable. Now, let's rest a minute. Capable means she is not a hand wringer who sits down and says, I can't do anything. A capable woman. Capable means the ability to cope. That's where you get the word capable from. She can cope with anything by herself. She doesn't mind if the brother opens the door for her. But she can do it by herself if she needs to. Are you listening? See, what some women call being well-mannered should be interpreted as lazy. You understand? They need to move a bucket from point A to point B and they wait till he comes home to move it. Now you're not virtuous. You're lazy. You are not capable. But a virtuous woman is capable. She can handle things. If he doesn't paint the house, paint it yourself. It's capable. Man, I love to see a woman get under that car hood and take them spark plugs out. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> We got some lazy women, and they call it good manners, capable, virtuous, a woman who is intelligent. This is a woman who doesn't sit back and just look at soap operas and know every name in days of our lives. <laughs> Hello. She is a, an intelligent woman. She reads intelligent books. Not Mills and Bones. <laughs> all the stories are the same. All they do is change the name. That's a dumb woman who goes through those things every week. An intelligent woman wants to know about the world affairs. She wants to know what God's doing in the history of life. She's an intelligent woman. She doesn't buy the inquirer to get gossip material. She's too intelligent, man, for that stuff. She reads the Bible. She gets the Word of God. Virtuous women are intelligent, capable gals. Hallelujah for godly women. When they walk into a room, everybody goes quiet. Because they look dashing. Lower. Intelligently dressed and groomed. When they speak, they're not brawling and loud. Hello. They don't throw their bodies in different directions. They are intelligent, capable women. Lower. When they open their mouths, wisdom leaks out and it infects the hearers. A virtuous woman, by the way, she is rare. Don't forget that. 
I love what the scripture says about this woman. It says this woman, the question is, who can find her? Read it. That's what it says in verse 10. Who is he that can find her? In other words, a woman like that, let it stand, you got to look for them. The word find, glory. <laughs> the word find means you got to seek. You listen to me, brothers? <laughs> I hear you in the old floor room. Let's praise the Lord. You understand me? You don't just sit back on the blocks and they show up. Hello. You don't find them hanging around the streets two o'clock in the morning. They don't come on strong and try and sell themselves. Hello. They don't wink first. They hard to find. You got to dig under all kind of stuff to find them. Glory. Now the ones who are not virtuous, they are advertising. They easy to find. They they on display. Sometimes they display too much, but they display. The Bible says, but this woman, you got to look for this one. Glory. They don't just show up, brother. A woman with a good heart, an intelligent, you usually find them hanging around God. If you want to find them, you got to go close to God. You got to look for them. Anytime a woman comes on too easy to you, brother, hang tight. She's probably not a rare one. You know, we got some women who don't care about their integrity. They just throw themselves at men. They look at a man and they get all carried away and they throw themselves on him. Man, a virtuous woman is reserved. She is intelligent. She is not loose. She's hard to find. Very difficult to find her. Sometimes you got to wait for 28 years to find her. Oh, but when you find her. Mm. Glory. It's like rubies. This word ruby, she said, it says she is far more precious than rubies. Now the Hebrew word ruby here is a pluralistic word in the Hebrew and it means all sorts of precious jewels. She is rare as a ruby or a jewel. Now you don't pick up jewels in the yard. You don't walk on the beach and pick up jewels. Rubies don't show up knocking on your door and say, here I am. As a matter of fact, most of you, the last time you saw a ruby, there was a glass between you and it. <laughs> Rare stuff. <laughs> Precious and rare. And I look at these beautiful wives, these directors I have, and these fine husbands. I think of rare jewels. Amen. A ruby, something that is created over a long period of time. Rubies are usually created under pressure. Are you listening, young women? Rubies don't just show up. Rubies have been in the making under the earth's surface for hundreds of years. When those gems are chipped from the rock in Africa, when those diamonds fall apart in those mountain cliffs by the ice chipping of those diamond workers, you are looking at thousands of years of creation working under pressure to produce a diamond, a ruby. What I'm trying to say is good women don't just happen. They are results. 
God been working on them for a long time. They don't just slip out of college and they, they made it. Good women don't just dress nice. Good women don't have a good face. A virtuous woman is a woman who has been kicked into the character of God. It takes so long to produce a good woman that God says she's like rubies. It takes a long time. And sometimes we see these gals show up real quick. Low cut dresses. Walking real sensual. Trying to attract a man. Loose, loose, loose. <laughs> loose. Walking around with, with no bra. Come on, look me in the face. Man, that is not rare. That's common. It's rare when you find a woman who the Lord has been working on for so many years. I mean, she's been through some stuff that she can offer you advice. She's been through the ruby process. She's been through the pressures of the times and the earth. It's a blessing to marry a ruby. Glory to God. Rare. So brothers, don't, don't jump at the ones who wink. The common man. Everybody blinking. <laughs> Ain't that right? Everybody blinks. But not everybody got character. Not everybody got virtue. Everybody's got good shape and good looks and funny hair and nice eyes, but what's but the character? Character is not something you're born with. Character is something that is created over time. Anybody can be born with a nice nose. They can be born with perfect lips, but check what's coming out of it. Got to be careful. The lips you kiss may bite you. Far above rubies and pearls. Far above rubies and pearls. <laughs> you know what I like about pearls? Pearls are normally created in the most unsuspecting places. How would you like to be created in a conch shell with a conch? How would you like to spend all your life being molded and created into something precious as a pearl in an oyster shell and all this gucky stuff around you. I think that's beautiful. Some of you young ladies have been brought up in homes where it wasn't too nice. But that doesn't mean God won't create a pearl out of you. Maybe your home feels like a conch shell. Slimy and everything. Maybe everything's not nice around it. But right in the midst of that, God can chip a beautiful pearl out of your life. And you can drop out of that shell where all the slime is, and you will be a pearl in the sight of God. God will create something beautiful out of nothing. The beauty of God's creation, a woman of virtue. Verse 11 talks about her attitude toward a mate. This is where it gets a little rough. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her confidently and relies on and believes safely in her so that he has no lack of honest gain or no need for spoil. Now hang on. He said this woman, this virtuous, capable, intelligent lady it's not the kind of woman who makes her husband, first of all, uncomfortable. Right. He is trusting safely. That's right. When she dresses, he don't want to be worrying if she's going to show too much. True. He is comfortable. That's right. 
When he sees coming to show up to meet him with some guests, he don't have to wonder if she's going to dress appropriately. He's comfortable. When she goes out by herself, he don't have to worry if she's going to see another man. He's trusting in her. He finds safety in her words. He don't have to worry if she is going to say the right thing when he represents her or she represents him. She can speak for him. Glory. She can make appointments for him. He trusts her. He feels safe with this woman. Are you a virtuous woman? Can he trust you when he comes home from work? Do you come staggering to the door with rollers in your hair? Slippers all over the floor? Smelling like fried fish? <laughs> and he just so happens to bring a guest home. Can he trust safely in you? <laughs> Keep smiling, ladies. Keep it up. Can he, can he lay back and say, I know my wife. I know she'll, she'll be all right. She, it's fine with her. Or is he always on edge, wondering what she's going to say? How she's going to take this? How she's going to respond to this? Maybe she'll react. I don't know what she'll do. Probably I shouldn't do anything. Is he always so on edge and so insecure that he cannot have peace? He's filled with anxiety. He's afraid to tell you something good because he always responds bad. Can he trust in you? Oh, it gets good here. It says, he can trust in her safely and confidently so that he has no need of spoil. Now this is serious folks. This woman does not put pressure on the man. Write it down. He don't have to feel pressured to go and find spoil. The word spoil refers to goods. Hang on. There are some women who put so much pressure on their men that the man basically got to steal to buy her what she demand. Every dress she sees she wants. Every style that come out she want to wear. Every car the Jones has got she want. She want to move out of this neighborhood. She don't want to be with these folks no more. Pressure, pressure, pressure. God says this woman, read it, this woman for him, she makes it possible that he has no need to go look for spoil. How often have I heard men cry to me, she want jewels again, want pearls. I can't please this woman. You ever heard that before? That's a common statement. What he's saying is the pressure man. God said that's an ungodly woman. I want a dress. I just bought you one. Yeah, I wore it once. It's old now. It's pressure. We want a crown. We can't afford one. I don't care. Get it. Pressure. God says, you're not a virtuous woman. You're not my kind of woman. It says here, her husband trusts in her and he has no need to look after spoil. Some men are afraid that they're not pleasing their wives because the wives make that pressure come upon them. Some men, they sit for days wondering how they're going to figure out to buy this birthday gift. And they go into debt, borrow money to please a woman who cannot be pleased. Pressure. I tell you you're going to walk on some toes, y'all are quiet this morning. <laughs> Spoil, he has no need to go run after things. Well, honey, 
Brother John, them, you know, they got a new car. The neighbors. Yes, I know. Well, we got this old rickety rick. And I'm tired driving around with this car tire always going flat. And this muffler making noise. I'm going to catch taxi. You drive it. Pressure on this guy. What does he have to do? He basically got to rob. Man, that's no help. A woman should be an asset to a man. If you read the next verse, that's exactly what it says. It says she will do him good. Read it. All the days of his life. Not one day will she be a humbug. She won't be a nag. She won't be pressuring him. Do this, do that. Buy this, buy that. I want this, I want that. They doing it, let's do it. No. It says she'll do him good. She will be a comfort and an encouragement to him all the time, every time, all day for the rest of his life. How many of you women can look in my eye and say, that's what you're doing? Some days, some men are afraid to go home. Good Lord. They know they're going to meet at the front door. I mean, they are afraid. They go home praying in tongues. Lord, help her not to be mad at me. I know I'm late. A nag. She's not a comfort to him. This woman, a virtuous woman, does not put pressure on a man. I'm talking to you single ladies. You start going out with somebody and all of a sudden, watch yourself. You start putting pressure. Pick me up at a certain time. He comes late, big row. You sit on the side of the car, hug the window, and keep quiet all the way home. He asks you, anything wrong? No. <laughs> did I do something? You know if you did. <laughs> Isn't that right? You mean you should have seen you the day before, right up under the man's hip. Just... <laughs> this guy, you know holding on to the steering wheel and you got him all squashed yeah I know then you start manipulating the guy putting pressure on him the Bible says a, a woman of God does not force a man to go and get spoiled buy me jewelry take me for dinner Buy me a dress, get me a car, buy me a house, let's get some new furniture. I hate these curtains. Take them down. I mean, the guy can never rest every time he sees you. Do this. I want this. I want that. No wonder why some men just leave. <laughs> just to breathe. They leave just to breathe. Look at me, women. Hang on. Christian women around the world and in the overflow room. <laughs> Watch the pressure. Careful with the pressure. The Bible says a woman of God does not put pressure on the man to get spoiled. Now, so maybe Sherry got jewelry and Mary, she got a car. But you got your man. And if they can sleep with their car, fine. <laughs> but you got your man. Amen? Yeah. Well, you said aloud, amen, back there, glory. <laughs> you understand? This woman is not a pressure cooker. <laughs> she cooks the pressure cooker pots, but she's not a pressure cooker. A man can, can walk in the midst of princesses and he won't feel uncomfortable. Because his, he knows he's done his, the best with his wife he could. And she's satisfied. She appreciates what he does. She buys her, he buys her Volkswagen and she thinks it's a Cadillac. 
and she drives it like a Cadillac, cleans it like a Cadillac, and she's proud and she brags about the Volkswagen. My husband bought me this. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. She doesn't compare herself with other women. She knows she's first class without them. She doesn't pressure her husband. I know some of you women are wondering, oh, well, how far is he going to go with this? <laughs> Verse 12, let's read it. It says, she will comfort and encourage and do him only good. Underline the word only. And I said, that's a big order. But a virtuous woman can do only good. It's possible. All the days of his life that she has life within her, she will do him good. She will give him pride when they go out together. She won't row him out at the table with guests around. She'll do him good. She doesn't cut her eyes at him when he spills the cream on the table. She'll do him good. She'll talk about him and brag about him and encourage him, make him the king of the house. She'll do him good. She wouldn't say to him, your hair look bad in the front of people. She'll kiss him and say, honey, follow me. Take him in the corridor and fix his hair. That's like a king, man. He walks back in there saying, <clears throat> Woo, glory. She'll do him good all the time. Wow. What a woman. You got to be intelligent to do good all the time. Intelligent? No. Not just smart. You got some smart ones. But they're not intelligent. They got academic... Uh, education, but they're still stupid. <laughs> She'll do him good. She doesn't walk around and he's afraid to introduce you to the people. Hello. And I say, good, where's your wife? Oh, she's not here, really. Not really here. She's over there, not here. She makes him ashamed. But a virtuous woman does him good. She dresses appropriate to represent him. She smells like the fragrance of Lebanon. Hallelujah. And if she doesn't wear pearls around her neck, they drop out of her mouth. Wisdom. Some of the most beautiful women in the world are the most empty-headed beings in the planet. <laughs> I was watching the Miss Universe contest one time and I sat there and I said to myself, these are worldwide material? They asked a girl one time, says, what is your hobby? Well, my hobby is, you see, I grew up playing basketball and uh, I said, Lord, have mercy on us. Beautiful woman. Beautiful. Physically beautiful. But ugly. In character. Watch it brothers. The rare breeds are hard to find. They don't always come in nice packages. Rubies are usually found under dirt and rock. Ugly mountains, choppy hills, covered with forests. Yuck. But that's where you find diamonds, jewels. Watch yourself. When you find a rose, usually there's a thorn nearby. Hmm. You got to be careful. Yeah. Verse 12 says she will comfort him and do good all the time. 
Verse 13 says, She seeks out the wool and flax and works with willing hands to do good, to develop it. This verse is saying this woman is intelligent, capable, not a pressure cooker, and she's also not lazy. Everybody say lazy. lazy. Now, some women are wired with laziness. Some of them are born with it. The Bible says the virtuous woman, the woman of God, is not a lazy woman. She is a woman who seeks out flax and wool. She goes out to find work. Now, wait a minute. She doesn't just sit down and say, well, he's the breadwinner, let him do it. Mm -mm. She goes and gets some ham to put on the bread. She is not a lazy woman. And it says here, she works willingly with her hands. She don't work because he's going to beat her. She doesn't work because she's afraid of him. She doesn't work because of threats and pressure. She works because she decides to work. This is my house. This is my job. This is my responsibility. I will do it. Amen. Some women cook because they don't want a grizzly bear show up in the afternoon. It's not a reason to cook. She cooked because you love the bear. <laughs> Says she works willingly with her own hands. Verse 14 tells us even more about her attitude toward work. It says she is like the merchant ships loaded with food stuff. She brings her goods from a far country. Some women, they feel like they are so delicate that they go in the rain, they'll melt. They spend three hours fixing their face. And can't kill a fly. But a woman of God is like a merchant ship. Let me tell you something about a merchant ship. A merchant ship got scars all over the hull. It has been through storms and icebergs. It has been hit with rocks and planks in the ocean. It has been through storms and weather that you couldn't imagine. But it still brings the goods home. And when you see those ships pair up near the docks there with those tropical laid it down big old containers with our food they've been through some stuff to get it here they don't care what it takes to get it they get it something else about merchant ships it says she is like a merchant ship she will go to a far country to get goods for her family the government of this country knows its responsibility to deliver for the citizens of this country the things we need to live a reasonably high standard life. And so those ships will go to China, Germany, spend months on the ocean to bring back something that you want to eat in your pot, in your kitchen. They will spend all the money for, for freight. They will get that stuff here because they want to feed the people in the country. We import over 90% of everything we consume. Those merchant ships work so hard. And listen, they are on schedule every time because they miss you stuff. And if there is hail or snow, if there is tidal wave or storm, they still got to come in because you still got to eat. Now, women, is that the way you are? It's raining. I can't go out. They just got to eat whatever we got. You haven't been through half of the stuff in life and you're always settling down doing nothing. Do you really love your family so much that you would treat it like a government treats its citizens. We will go to the ends of the earth to get the products that we need for our people. Is that the way you are, wife? Is that what you do? Do you go out of all of your way to make sure your family is taken care of? 
How long? Some women don't want any scars. Little bruise here and they think they're dead. Little cut here and oh Lord, here comes the glory. Listen, a woman of God is a woman who's tough. Man, she's tough. Glory. She's tough. We sit here, listen to Dr. Pickett, and we praise the Lord while she teaches us, ask her her life story. She's a merchant. She's an old merchant ship. <laughs> she has some scars on her. She has a mental kneecap. She walks around on faith alone. Been married and husband died and was out of mind for seven years. Was kicked out of a church called a fanatic. They called her a demon possessed woman. You let her tell you her story, you'll cry. And yet this woman, we sit there and we lap up the pearls that drop from her lips. You're talking about a merchant ship. When she speaks, you're talking about authority talking. She can bring the goods home and deliver. And some of you young ladies sit there and go, I want to be like her. Really? Then get your rudder in order. Tighten up all of your mask. Get everything straight. Because if you're going to be like her, you got to go through some stones like a merchant ship to bring the goods home. This is a serious woman. Verse 15 says, She rises while... It is still night. Now, wait a minute. Not only is she not lazy, she's not a sleeper. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. Just hold your shoes. And she goes up before day, rises while it's just night, to get food for her household. And she assigns her maids their task. Now this woman, first of all, she is a leader. Write that down, please. A woman of God is a leader. She has a leader spirit. She doesn't lead the man. She leads her responsibilities. She's a leader. She has people who are looking up to her, her maids. People who, who work under her authority and it says she gets up early before the sun comes up it still looks like night when she gets up she is a planner she gets up and plans the work for the servants this woman is an administrator a woman of god doesn't just say well however the old mop flops however the cookie crumbles that's the way it is mm -mm, she doesn't do that she, she doesn't say like Sarah, K, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. She's not that kind of woman. She's the kind of woman who says, what will be, I can make it be. You listening? She decides and plans what she wants to see happen. She's an administrator. She's intelligent, you see. People don't walk in the house and work when they feel like. Hello? I and how they feel like. This woman is a woman of God, man. She got head on her body. She's intelligent. When she got people working for her, she puts them to task and she tells them what to do. And if they don't do it right, she make them do it again. She assigns to her maids their task. And she wakes up while it is yet night. Now some women don't wake up until midday. That's why they don't get the rollers out. There are some hard working women in this world. Some do get at 5 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning to work. But there are others, they won't get up for nothing in the world. Husband always got to lean over and kiss him and say goodbye. And all they say is, hmm. <laughs> That's not a woman of God. 
Lazy people are not people who keep company with God. God is a, is a, is a God, he's industrious. He likes people who are workers, who are excited about getting things accomplished. You want to be a, the perfect lady? Don't sleep late. Some husbands get up and all they drink is a cup of tea. <laughs> drink it down. You had breakfast? No. Why? My wife didn't get up. Why? She sleeps till about 11.30. <laughs> Young women, set your alarm clock from now on. Get yourself in the habit of facing the day early. When everybody else is sleeping, she is up planning the task for the day. She's a, an industrious, intelligent worker. Look at verse 16. It says, she considers a new field before she buys it or accepts it. It's good teaching, ma. This woman is into real estate. Her. Now notice, she is the one who considers the field before she buys it. She doesn't say, honey, what you think? Sweetheart, but nothing. She can handle it. Amen. Every little thing, I've got to run to your husband. Got to run to your boyfriend. God says a woman of God is intelligent. She is able to, to analyze and to decide and to judge if something is good. Some men get tired of hearing this. What you think, honey? What you think, honey? What is your opinion, darling? What you think, honey? Sometimes they just want to say, woman, what you think? <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> I mean, you don't have a brain? Don't you use your head? Good Lord, God gave you one. With everything, it's disturbing the man all day at his job. The faucet leaking, honey, what to do? Turn it off. <laughs> oh, oh. Then you call him back. It went off, you know. I know, woman. <laughs> you know, every little thing. Start raining, the leak comes from the roof, call him up. The roof leaks it. What you want the man to do? Climb up on the roof and fix it? Put a pail and catch it till he comes. Every little thing. Call the man up in a business meeting, pull him out of the business meeting. Yes, honey. The dog got ran over. <laughs> Every little thing. Use your mind. God bless you with a good brain, woman. You're an intelligent lady. So women are sitting around waiting till they get married before they buy some property. Hello. Man, you're working and you're saving your money. Invest. Don't let, don't wait till no man tell you what to do. You got an intelligent first class brain on your shoulders and you use it. <laughs> Praise God. Let him meet, let him meet you with some land already. Be a blessing to him. Be an asset to the union of marriage. I love these young women who are involved in business. Oh, that just gets me excited. Praise God. Because this is God's woman. This woman is getting into real estate, man. It says here, she considers the field. She checks it out. She doesn't just buy any little thing. Anybody comes knocking, selling. Boy, that's another thing. Women got weakness in. Somebody comes, Avon, ding dong. <laughs> then they run to the husband. I want some perfume. Her husband already buy her some Estelada last week. You want to buy everything you see? Consider something. Consider it. Look at it. Is this reasonable to buy now? <laughs> a comment, sister. Don't worry. <laughs> you want to be a virtuous woman? This is your time. The Bible says this woman is a smart, intelligent woman. She's able to make decisions. Some women, you know, they let men beat them up. 
misuse them, abuse them. They let men talk bad to them and curse them, throw bottles and pots at them. That's a dumb woman. An intelligent woman, first of all, she ducks. <laughs> To lure it. Some just stand there and let them out and beat them. Man, what are you going to live in that kind of situation? I'm not telling you get a divorce, but don't put your body in jeopardy. Leave, go to mama and tell this creature settles down to be a human. It's dumb to sit there and let somebody beat you and then call it suffering for Jesus. You ain't suffering for Jesus. You're suffering for yourself. It says she considers a field before she buys it. And look at the next line. And not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming others. With her savings of time and strength, she plants a fruitful vineyard. Not only does she buy the field. She farms it. This woman is heavy, man. I like her. Glory. She buy it and she operate a business. Now, there are some of you women. You'll wait till he come with the hoe. You don't want to get your fingernails dirty. You done got them all manicured now. You don't want to get your hands in soil. But this woman, she's a serious woman. Intelligent woman. This is my field. And if I don't plant in this field, I won't get no crop. Let me plant in my own field. I bought it, why can't I plant it? You know, any man run into a woman like that, he'll be a fool to let her go. After all, he's not just getting her, man. He's getting the field. <laughs> Glory. Double blessing. Some women are a deficit to men. Write it down, please. Pure deficits. They don't bring nothing to the union. Nothing. Except nagging and rowing. They capitalize on those things. That's their major in school. How to win an argument. But they bring nothing. This woman is an asset to her husband. She is a blessing to him. She does him good. My, I've heard men say to me, Brother Miles, she's a burden. I said, what do you mean? She just sucks up everything I deliver. Just spends everything, eats everything, just eats. <laughs> Sleeps all day and eats. Takes all my money. It's a deficit. Man, when a man, when a man wants a ruby, he got to look. It's difficult to find him. This kind of woman, the Bible says, she don't show up every week. She doesn't. She doesn't come advertising. This is a rare woman. 
Some of you girls sitting there saying, that's me, child. Hang on, we're not sure. Watch it. Check yourself first. See if you are a nag or a pressure cooker. Do you have the attitude that you want to wear every shoe everybody else wears? Then you are a problem. You want to change your dress every week? Look out. Because a man got to live with that. Uh oh. See, we need to understand that a woman of God is a blessing to her husband. She doesn't put him under pressure. She's a good woman. Does him good all the days of his life. He never have to worry where she is or if she's doing right. You know, I think of my brother Stanley here, you know. His wife is one of our directors. Sometimes we be in meetings 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night. Man. And he'd go to sleep. His wife out. I'm telling you. Why? Not because he trusts safely in his wife. He knows that she will do him good all the days of his life. That her hands are working things that are profitable and skillful. She's an asset. He's secure. What a way to sleep, brothers. What a way to sleep. What? Where my time is gone, where am I take this right here next week? But I want you, right where you are, to ask yourself a question. Are you the perfect lady? Don't answer it. Just think about it. No matter how you dress, no matter what kind of perfume you use, no matter how expensive your jewelry is, are you the perfect lady? That's what God's after, a virtuous woman. I want you to pray right now. Let's bow our heads together. Those in the old floor room, I want you to, to bow your heads. If you are a lady, no matter how old you are, I want you to think about what was said. And you men pray for these precious women. God has given us all an example to live by. We talked about the men and what they're supposed to be and do. Now the women have their part too. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.